Hello and welcome to my video. Now this one is um, not a painting that contains happy little trees and happy little clouds. It's a little bit dystopian, but uh, it's really, uh, I'm after a mood. So I, I didn't really want a pretty picture. I think it ends up quite striking, but it's, uh, I wouldn't describe it as a pretty picture. Canvas, as you can see there, I've, I've got is um, it's one that I've got several paintings uh, on and just uh, lost interest in them, so I just painted over. Um, and it's um, a big one. It's 150 centimeters wide by 50 deep. Uh, with in fact this one, I think four coats of gesso to cover up the previous paintings. My colors to start with my normal colors except uh, there is no sap green in this one this is Payne's gray and red ochre and instead of oil i'm using alkyd now alkyd medium is an interesting medium this particular one dries in about five hours so it's uh, it's flexible long enough for me uh, for some people it may not be long enough you may need a bit of extra time but uh, five hours is uh, is fine and um, as you can see, there's, there's no secret to doing this. You just mix it with the alkyd. It doesn't matter whether you uh, have a lot of colour in it or a little bit of colour. It uh, just does exactly the same thing as oil paint. It feels like oil paint. Uh, feels like oil. And um, there's virtually no smell from it. Now, if you were interested in what alkyd is, it's, um, it's a resin and... Um, I looked it up because I've never looked it up before and it contains all kinds of stuff. Seems quite harmless. I didn't have any uh, issues with uh, smell or breathing. It just uh, seems to be quite inert. As I said, this is not going to be, well, some people may find it pretty. I mean, I liked it, but it's all down to the individual, isn't it? Now you'll notice there's, that was quite a cut in the video. I've um, I've done my best to keep me out of the picture, so you will notice that occasionally the painting will seem to advance a little bit without me doing anything. That's just uh, me editing out me, basically. And I'm doing the usual thing where I put the paint on. There you go. There was a that was a cut. I got right in the way there, and it's. Uh, even if it doesn't irritate you, it irritates me, so I'm, I'm working on that. This is um, uh, just a cheap little brush. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my usual thing, in other words, put the paint down, drag it sideways to take paint off, and also using paper towels later on in the picture. You will notice that it's extremely dark at the moment. That I will get rid of that later. Well, n no, that's not strictly true. My dear old camera, I still haven't got a replacement yet, because quite frankly, uh, a really good camera for this sort of thing is quite expensive, and I'm saving up my money to get something that's uh, really going to do the job much better than my old uh, Nikon. Nothing against Nikon, great cameras. This one has lasted over 10 years now. And it still produces excellent still pictures. It's just the videos are a little bit iffy. Anyway, I'll get, I'll get that sorted out um, as soon as possible. I'm using the same colour in the sky at the moment. I haven't added any other colours. Uh, it's mostly Payne's Grey. I will chuck in a little bit of red ochre in the sky eventually. And, uh, and some white. And the usual white that I use as same as everyone else really, is uh, titanium white. When I was younger, uh, we used to use um, flake white, but of course that's uh, highly regulated now because it contains lead, and um, so you have to use titanium. And you can actually buy um, titanium transparent white. I've never really understood the reason for this because Frankly, if you've got titanium white and you want it to be less opaque, put oil in it. Save buying another tube of slightly weaker paint. It's the same with, a, there's a colour called Naples Yellow. If you want Naples Yellow, 
well, first of all, don't buy it. Use yellow ochre. Add white. That will make Naples yellow. It's pretty well the same. It's just the uh, paint manufacturers trying to uh, boost their product range, I guess. As I said, reasonably soon the, the picture will get lighter and you'll see more of what's going on. It is actually quite dark. I do start my paintings as dark as possible. As I've explained before, if you, if you start dark, it's easier to make areas lighter. If you start light and then try to add dark paint on top, it mixes with what you've already got on the painting and you end up with just mush, which, which doesn't have any good juicy contrasts in it. And, a, and trust me, a picture won't work unless you have some contrasts. The only way it will work is if you're painting a picture that is completely flooded with light, uh, where there are very few contrasts. That's not a sort of painting that I would do. Some people would, particularly Impressionists, and um, I just don't. I like, uh, I like my contrasts. You can see there that the paint is very transparent in some places. It's just where I've um, just put a little bit more alkyd into the, um, into the paint. And this is not speeded up at all. There will be a little section in a minute that is speeded up, and I'll explain why I've done that. I don't often do this, because most people don't like it, frankly. Um, there's a bit that I've, sp I've spared up because I just got in the way too much, and I thought, well, let's get you through that quickly and painlessly so that uh, you can see what's going on. So this is, this is normal speed, and um, I'm just chucking the paint on, really, just to, you know, just to get a theme, I suppose, and to get, to get a, a feeling into it. This is my big brush now. This is about a um, 15 centimeter wide brush. I used to call it a wallpaper painting brush because, because quite frankly, that's what I thought it was. But of course, several people have uh, reminded me now that not many people use wall, um, wallpaper anymore. So it is just a painting brush. Although I do have a few older ones that I'm sure were uh, pasting brushes. You may just be able to see me there. I'm just, I've got a wadge of paper in my left hand and I'm just running the, uh, the brush down through the paper just to take off the surplus. Something I hate doing, if I can, is repeating stuff too much. I mean, there are certain things I think that need repeating just to sort of drum home to people exactly what's going on. It's one of the best ways to learn. Um, but I don't use turpentine. don't use any thinners at all. They're deadly and uh, detest them. So I just wipe it, as you can see there, just to get the color off, just so the brush doesn't become too loaded. Interesting thing is that when you've done that a few times and given it a good, a good uh, rubbing, um, it, it actually doesn't transmit too much paint onto the picture. Uh, you, you, for instance, if I put white along that horizon, which I will be doing later, um, you can go over it with a brush that's got a slight grey or bluish stain on it, and it won't really have that much of an effect. Now, this is the bit where I've speeded up a bit, because, as you can see, uh, there's an absolutely stunning shot of my shoulder there, and I'm sure you don't want to see that. All I'm doing, really, is uh, I'm not adding paint at this stage. I'm smoothing out. Ah, here's a good point. People have asked me many times, what brush do I use for blending? Well, I used to use um, a small, soft brush. Very, very soft haired brush for, for blending clouds. But that was years ago. I, I, I don't do it now because, quite frankly, you don't need it. Um, it, I, I prefer to blend the whole sky in one go rather than concentrate on small areas of blending because, uh, well, it just didn't work for me. I, I just like to, to move through the thing as quickly as possible. We're coming to the end of the speeded up bit. Is it speeded up or sped up? I think it must be sped up. Anyway, I'm fed up with sped up, so we're going to go back to normal speed any second now. 
As you can see there, a bit of paper towel just to take off some paint. The reason I'm taking it off is so that I can thin it down to add another colour later. OK, so, miraculously, my camera has decided to cooperate. What I'm doing here is I'm breaking up some light areas in the background. Now, this, this is to create the illusion of either a field that is catching light, and there are trees, trees in uh, front of those fields that are causing those, those shapes, or it could be something else. It, it's down to what the viewer interprets. Somebody who looked at this picture on my Facebook page said, oh, I like the distant bridge. Okay, well, if it looks like a bridge, fine. It isn't a bridge, but it could be. This is, um, this is totally freestyle painting. There's, there was, when I started, there was no plan. I knew it would be a landscape, but there's no plan to say, for instance, what I'm doing there. You know, I didn't think, oh, well, a First of all, a clump of trees on the horizon, which eventually stops being a clump of trees. And I decided to make it into some kind of uh, hill or rock formation. And in fact, because of the style of the painting, it seems to work better. It's a little, it's quite dystopian in a way. Now the painting won't stay, well, how do you see it? Do you see this as depressing? Personally, I don't. I see it as, a, as a, a picture that evokes an emotion. And it's just a certain time of day in certain conditions. And uh, if it comes over as dystopian or mysterious or dark, well, it doesn't really matter. It's uh, as long as it evokes a feeling. That's, that's what I'm really after. And you can see there how quickly you can give the impression of something like that just by using the color of the what what is now a rock formation and the color of the sky and pulling them together because the lighter areas of the sky when you pull it into the rock formation gives the feeling of light and shape um, and form on different sides of the object so here's another thing which I think people, if you're interested in this style of painting, if you want to get strong feelings of emotion in your picture, you must not be afraid of adding just that extra bit of contrast every now and then. If you think you're losing it a bit, just chuck a bit more paint on. You can always take it off a little bit gradually later. This is almost um, pure Payne's Grey here now. I haven't... Uh, I haven't got any red ochre in that bit that you're seeing me paint now. And red ochre, lovely colour, red ochre. You see how in the sky you've got that area slightly to the left at the top, which is sort of pinkish, and then to the right, it's in its more pure form, it's quite brown. It's exactly the same colour, it just depends on how transparent you make it and whether you put a little bit of white in it. Very, very flexible colour. When I get back to this painting, once it's dry, um, I'm going to add a little bit of green to the landscape. At the moment, this is purely structural. I'm just making shapes. Some may like it as it is. Some think, some people will look at this and think it's possibly one of the most depressing things they've ever seen. Somebody did say on Facebook, oh, I see the ash has settled. I assume um, <laughs> um, they see it as some kind of like a volcanic eruption. I don't know. But anyway, never mind. What I won't be doing is adding any of the walking dead to this landscape. Possibly it's uh, depressing enough as it is. Let me know about that, you see, because I, I um, even though I'm painting the thing, I, I can see that some people would find it depressing. 
the overall feeling that I'm getting, the feedback that I've been getting, is that people like it, and they, they like the drama. So uh, I'd be very interested to know what you think. But also, be prepared, there will be a follow-up video to this. Um, as I said, I'll be adding green and yellow tones to the landscape. And I'll also be going over the sky again at the end, not the end of this video, but at the end of the painting when I finally finish it, uh, with various glazes to make it uh, slightly more colourful. Don't want to overdo it. I mean, actually, um, I say that, but you could, because glazing is such a flexible technique, you could add lots and lots of layers of glaze to this at the end and get all kinds of fascinating effects. You could glaze it so much that the clouds almost disappear into the darkness at the top and the only light will be the base of the um, cloud base, uh, in other words, the horizon, where you've got that light area. So it's just a hint of something coming through. And then, um, as someone said uh, also, uh, oh look, Mordor. It looks like Mordor. Well, maybe that maybe it does. Um, I used to do um, storyboards for adverts, and a lot of adverts back in those days when I did them were actually like mini uh, films. So I would do sketches for ad advertisements for television, and some of them, you know, were like little mini epics. Quite fascinating work to do. So I had to do things like this. Um, very quickly, just to show the uh, camera operators uh, where they could position their cameras to get certain effects. Um, but more of that in another video. Here I'm putting the paint right into the white of the cloud there. It's always fascinated me how quickly you can get uh, perspective just by doing that. So I'm, I'm actually almost mixing on the painting, really. Some people say you shouldn't do that. Some people say it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm with the it doesn't matter brigade. Quite frankly, if you get the effect you're after by doing it this way, that's fine. It's The end result is the important thing. Compositionally, there are certain things that you'll find once you really get into painting, once you've um, and once you understand uh, composition a little bit, there are things that you will do automatically. For instance, okay, now let's get into this one. So let's look at composition. In on the land part, just to the right of my brush, see that light area that swoops out across the landscape, that leads you to a certain point on the horizon. So I keep that. All the way through. I might break it as I'm doing there with the hint of what could be a tree, but I keep that line so it leads you over to that uh, slightly right of center area of the horizon. And that in turn leads you back to the left to the main rock structure. Below that you've got another light patch and that leads you back down to the foreground. So you've got a circle it's almost like I'm trying to trap the viewer in that area so that I keep the eye in the picture. Someone, I can't remember who it was, an artist that I follow um, on various um, things like either uh, YouTube or Facebook. And he said something which is just so obvious, really. What you want when people are looking at your painting, particularly if you're in a gallery, is to look at is to walk along the line of pictures, come to your painting, look into it, and be unable to leave it. So you're you're basically trying to control the uh, the way the person looks into your picture. Have thing have shapes that point to certain parts of the picture, and also trap the viewer in the painting. Don't let them leave the edge of the painting because out there there's danger. There's another painting next to it. And what you don't want is people looking at that one. Huh. Why would you want that? So, yeah, keep people in there. Use all the devices you can to keep the interest in the picture. So 
think I can certainly say at this point, these are not happy little clouds. I also have to say I'm really pleased about that. Do you, do you like little white fluffy clouds? It's just a general question I'm putting out there. Let me know. Um, I think there are times when you can, you can do that in a painting and it's perfectly acceptable. Depends what you want. If you want to paint pretty little pictures that people will glance at for a few seconds and then move on thinking that was a nice little picture, nice little trees, nice little white fluffy clouds. Well, that's fine. It's just not me. Um, I've never been um, of that school of thought or school of painting. I like... Oh, I can't repeat it again, can I? Yes, I can. Drama. I like drama. So off we go being dramatic. Here I'm using obviously white. Uh, it's pure white when I put it on. I'm not putting it on as grey. It just turns grey when it's on there because it's mixing with the paint's grey. That's all. And that is what I want at the moment. It would be quite tricky really to get any bright white highlights on those clouds. I think I attempted it a bit later in the painting but for now I'm sort of getting the mid-tones. In other words the transition between the shadow either under or over the cloud before you actually get to the white. And as I said early on, I'm using Alkid and it will dry quite quickly. In fact, by the time I got to the end of the painting, now this painting only took about 43 minutes. I've edited, edit, God, I can never say that word. I've edited it down to um, I think it's about 35 minutes um, and I've had to chop off obviously the bits of me that uh, are undesirable to look at and um, even in that time the, the alkid was causing the paint to dry by the next day uh, it was touch dry so this is about I guess three days ago from the time I'm uploading this. Um, it's almost at the level where I can start adding glazes. Now here, um, this is a colour I didn't mention at the beginning. This is my favourite red at the moment, and it's called Japanese Red. A lot of people ask me about Japanese Red. They say they can't find it anywhere. Well, this, my, the paints I use are made by Le Franc and Bourgeois. I'll put the name in the description box underneath. And it's, I don't know what it is about this, it's just so, such a pure red to, to me. Almost on the edge of orange, but without, um, some oranges can look a little bit grubby, particularly if they have a little bit too much blue in them. This is just, uh, I find, the most vibrant, um, interesting red that I've come across in a long time. Um, so... I must stop saying um. So that's uh, that. That's what that is. Now, most people, when they're going to use a red, they tend to go toward uh, cadmium. Okay, cadmium red's fine for certain things, but for me, this one is just the red of the moment. So uh, that's that. Now, if you want to make Japanese red and you can't actually get this brand, the best thing to do is just use cadmium Put a bit of white in it, turn it slightly pink, and add a minute amount of yellow. Well, actually, when I say minute, not that minute, because quite often when you add yellow to red to make an orange, or an orangey red, you'll find that uh, you have to shovel the um, yellow into it. It just gets absorbed quite quickly. So anyway, save yourself the pain. Just, but just try and find Japanese red. There is a company in England, I don't think there's anywhere in America you can get it, but, well maybe there is, but anyway, there's a company in England called Jackson's Art Supplies of London, and uh, I'll put a link to them as well, in case you uh, want to buy the stuff online. They, they I think, have a good range of Le Franc and Bourgeois colours. Around this um, rock formation now, I'm, I'm trying to get some pure white, so to try and do this with a brush at this stage would just be um, 
well, the wrong way to go about it. It would just mix with the uh, colours above. So to get the, a pure white there, best thing is to use a palette knife. If you are painting freestyle like this, don't try and be too precise, because it doesn't matter. It's uh, The painting only exists in your mind, so if you make something that isn't quite right, don't worry. Nobody else knows. To, to the viewer, you are painting or have painted what is ever in your mind, what what was going through your head at the time. So you don't need to be precise. It can just be um, any shapes at all. You notice the cloud there. You see, I'm not... I'm not doing a cloud that necessarily has ever existed. It's just in my mind. Same as the um, horizon. If I was trying to get this kind of pure white up the top there, with a brush, it wouldn't work. You have to let the paint sit on the colours underneath. So palette knife is the best way to go about that. Something about the canvas. Um, you, you may have noticed um, at the beginning, when I turned it over, it's a, it's a what's called a, a deep profile canvas. It's quite thick from front to back. And the reason is, because it's so big, they have to do that so that the back struts can be a good distance from the canvas. I'll explain why. Over this kind of expanse, the canvas, it doesn't matter how tight you have it stretched, it will sag a little bit in the middle. I don't mean it'll actually, you know, blow in the wind, but not that kind of sag, but it, um, it has to be a good distance from the strut so that when you put your brush on the surface to paint, you don't push the canvas against the struts. They need to be far enough away for there to be a good gap so that you don't end up with the, the shape of the struts showing through the front of the canvas. It's really annoying when that happens. You, you'd be painting a large area of something quite flat and then suddenly this sort of cross appears where the, where the struts um, transition across the back. So uh, it's worth getting, a, if you're going to do something big like this, it's worth getting a deep profile canvas. Hope that makes sense. If you look uh, to the left of the picture now, you see that white area below the rock structure, right on the left hand edge. Now that's just canvas showing through. I, do I keep that? I'm not sure that I do keep it quite that bright, but you could. You could leave that so that when you put colour on the foreground, it'll change. It'll be different when it's on the slightly grey areas. It'll be muted. When you put the glazing over that light area, it'll be brighter. And that could be something that you want. A little bit of um, what I call twinkle. When I, when I paint pictures like this, um, the bit I, I always look forward to is the sky, because to, frankly, um, I, I'm not showing off, I'm not that sort of person. To me, skies are the easy bit. Some people will heavily disagree with this, and they'll say, oh, that's really difficult, the sky. Actually, no, because the, they're so... Um, the very nature of skies is that they are very relaxed things. They're floppy and they fly around in the air and they they, they take up the shapes that the, the wind dictates to them. Very loose and fluffy objects. Once you get down to the earth, everything's a little bit more rigid. And I I like the I like the freeness that you get when you paint a sky. One of the things that holds people back on skies is they try to be precise. Um, depends on your style of painting. You know, there are artists out there who spend hours or even days just working on the sky of a painting. Uh, I'm never really satisfied about painting a sky unless I can do it in about two hours, particularly for a painting this size. Two hours, that's enough for me. If I can't get it, I'll start from scratch and aim for doing it in at least maximum two hours. Uh, it's just, um, they're quite liberating things to paint. If, you, if you've watched my other videos, you will have heard me say this before, that skies, skies are never the same. 
any sky you paint. Uh, if if someone looks at well, okay, let me start that again. If you if you're painting a sky and somebody says, "Well, I've never seen a sky like that before," well, actually, they're just being honest, really, because that sky's never existed before. And if you look out the window, the sky that you're seeing, if there are clouds, if it's just blue, it's a bit uh, it doesn't really um, relate to this. But if there are clouds, every time you look at the sky, that sky's never been there before. No one's ever seen that sky before. So just do what you like. Oh, something I... Did I say this in a recent video? You know, as you get older, you tend to forget things. But um, someone uh, has asked me... Well, actually, no, many times people have asked me, what do you clean your brushes with? And I, I always say, all over Facebook, you know, I say, don't use turpentine, use detergent. I use detergent, the stuff you put in your washing machine to clean your clothes. The way I find it best to explain this is if you were cooking with a frying pan and you were using, say, vegetable oil or olive oil to cook your whatever it is you're cooking, what would you clean the pan with afterwards? Now, I, I think I can say with 100% certainty that you would not use turpentine. What would you use? Personally, I'd use detergent. Same for brushes. Use detergent. It does exactly the same thing. Cleans your brushes. They also smell nice. In fact, uh, when I do clean my brushes, I have to keep the cat out of the room for a while because she insists on going and sniffing the brushes. She's just crazy about the smell of detergent. A bit disturbing sometimes. Don't want to get my cat hooked on the smell of detergent. <laughs> Nothing to do with painting, but um, I did get some catnip for the for my cat's name is Tiger Lily, by the way. This is my studio cat, um, and um, my soul cat. I guess that's a good way to sum her up. She's my soul cat. Absolutely adorable cat. Love cats. Anyway, she um. If I wash my hands with soap, well, I say if, I do wash my hands with soap, but um, she goes berserk. She has absolutely adores the smell of soap. Strange. Anyway, back to more serious things. Okay, you can see there I'm adding a bit of contrast to the edge there. It's quite tricky. The paint's still a little bit too wet. And what, what you don't want, by the way, is when you have... Um, light on the horizon like this do not make the light follow the contour of the land the the light must not rise up go over the top of the hill and then go down the other side it has to continue across if you don't do that it'll look come um, it just look wrong see you notice there that i'm pulling the color as horizontally as i can behind that uh, Thing. What's that? There's this place in America where they filmed um, Close Encounters, Devils something? I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, it's a little bit like that. So I, I will work on this when it's dried off completely to make sure that I'm not doing that. I want the light to go straight behind the landscape. This, uh, this effect, by the way, of using a palette knife, a bit like a flat iron, back and forth, is actually a very quick way to get uh, certain types of cloud. Just back and forth, and it, uh, it produces nice, flat, streaky clouds. is possibly the only fiddly bit of the painting but with things like that it's quite important to get that right if you, you don't want to be quite so relaxed uh, when you're trying to define some edges like that the um 
the year has been interesting. What with all this uh, coronavirus thing. I had um, a retreat in France for the first week of June, totally wiped out. Nobody can come to that because obviously it's safer not to. It's, uh, the, it's all a little bit mixed up at the moment. Nobody quite really knows what's going on. Although I think if you come to France, there's this thing now where you have to go into quarantine for two weeks. So if someone was coming here for a two-week holiday, they've got to come for four weeks so that they can be in quarantine for two and then do whatever it was they wanted to do for the next two weeks. So that's messed everything up. The And also my one-to-one -one students, obviously that's been put on hold until things uh, resolve themselves. So I do have a retreat in August. I'm hoping that'll go ahead. I'm not, I'm not really holding my breath on that one because I've, I've just got a sneaky feeling it won't go ahead because I think it's too soon for things to be um, sorted out. However, I will be um, hopefully continuing next year either one-to-one -one lessons or retreats. The retreats, I think, um, well, the one-to-ones really were successful last year. I taught a lot of people, met some delightful people. And it was good fun. It's great fun. Uh, the retreats hopefully will continue next year. As soon as I know, uh, obviously I'll put a, a message on my um, Facebook page. And uh, let's hope uh, we can all reboot next year. I am actually thinking of maybe, I'm not sure yet. Now, I used to, I used to do online lessons on Skype. Uh, Skype. I don't know what it is about Skype. The image quality is rubbish. Whether it's the webcam or whether it's something to do with Skype, I don't know. But I've been experimenting with Zoom. Now, Zoom seems to have better picture quality. I haven't quite... Uh, I've got it on my computer. I haven't really... I haven't even made a Zoom call yet. I think I'll have to do that to see what happens. Uh, but it seems to be very, very high quality. We'll see. So if you're interested... A, in either one-to-one -one lessons next year or coming uh, to one of my venues which are held at an unbelievably gorgeous place in France. It's, uh, it, you will live a life of luxury while you're there. Excellent food. I think it's all, all vegetarian, um, which is fine. It's good for you occasionally to not eat meat. Possibly good for you all the time not to eat meat, but anyway. And it's um it's delightful surroundings, swimming pool. Um, it's just wonderful. It's just an amazing place. In fact, I think I'll um try and get over there and get some drone footage from the air just to give you an idea. And I might include that on my next video just to just to give you a taste of where it's going to be at. So here we are. We got a, we're coming reasonably close to the end. Don't know how far we got here. We're at, uh, 39 minutes, so oh, it is a bit longer than I thought. So there I'm just putting in a, um, a few distant smudges. It's just an impression of whatever's going on in the background, really. Nothing specific. It's just, uh, it's just so that the person can figure out what they want to see there. And again, a little bit more white just to get some contrast. You see how that starts to come alive when you get that, that uh, little bit of extra light in there? So I think we'll be soon coming to, uh, to my version of me trying to hold the camera steady so that I can give you a, a panoramic view of the entire uh, painting. Not easy. I don't have a gimbal, so what I had to do was uh, just rotate my camera on the tripod, and then I slowed the film down, film, slowed the video down uh, to, so that it uh, irons out any shaking.
my big smoothing brush just uh, just to tone down some of the sky a little bit and also add a few mid-tones over on the left. This is something that I uh, do with my paintings a lot. I have a big dark area either on the left or the right hand side. Um, light one side, dark the other. It's a sort of traditional thing. A lot of paintings do this. And I think it was uh, originally to do with um, because everything in paintings, uh, classical paintings, is quite symbolic. So they would show the dark side and the light side. So there we are. I'm just, but I do sometimes go a little bit heavy on the dark side. So I, I thought, well, this one I'll just add in a few little light spots, a few little glimmers of hope on the horizon, and then again, just. So I'm, I, in fact, let me just explain there. I use the tip of the brush to put the color on, and then I'm using the side of the brush I'm almost uh, I'm, and I'm barely touching it it's just a slight skim so imagine you were doing that with a small blending brush that would take you um, quite a long time whereas if you do it this way uh, it's all over in a few seconds it's definitely definitely the quick way to paint Well, I think we're almost there, so I'm going to start saying goodbye. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learnt something. Keep your comments polite. I don't do rude. And um, uh, I'll see you on the next video. Before I go, though, I'd just like to say, if you have liked this, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell button. That means that next time I put a video up, you'll know. I do have a Patreon page, details below, if you feel like contributing and uh, any, any money that I make from it is used, well it's recycled, it's recycled money, I use it to buy paint, that's all, there's uh, no exotic holidays paid for in that, it's uh, just enough really to keep me in paint and sometimes a little bit of food to keep me going. So there we are. Now, this is, this is a bit that um, I go. I hope it doesn't come out too wobbly, but um, this is the whole painting. So while that fades away, I'll just say thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Take care and bye for now. <laughs>